say that some people don't have the privilege when you basically just said that trans people aren't valid. They're not a thing. They're just girls pretending to be boys or boys pretending to be girls. Yeah. Mm, okay. Like, okay. Oh, someone's excited. Okay. But gender is a completely different thing. No, gender is not disconnected from sex. So. It's not completely disconnected, but it's still a cultural thing. It's still from society. It's still okay. No, it is not in the mind. Okay, you're not a man if you think you're a man. And I didn't say pretending, or if I did, I shouldn't have said pretending. Let me amend. Like, okay, I said a boy who thinks he's a girl. That's the usual phraseology I use. Not playing, I usually say a boy who thinks he's a girl or a girl who thinks he's a boy, which is technically what we're talking about. Here, As far as the actual psychological issues at play, it used to be called gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder, now they call it gender dysphoria. The idea that, that sex or gender are malleable is not true. Okay, and I'm not denying your humanity if you are a transgender person. I am saying that you are not the sex to which you claim to be. You're still a human being, and you're a human being with an issue that I'm, you know, I wish you Godspeed in, in dealing with in whatever way you see fit. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend, that men are women and women are men. No, my answer is no. I'm not going to. I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place. They can't just like. I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. That written, though? In the name one. Boy Scouts. <laughs> because because it, because this is because this is a a very okay for. Because for all of human history, boy meant boy and girl meant girl. Boy did not mean girl. And if I call you a moose, are you suddenly a moose? Okay, if I redefine our terms. No. It's a, yes, that's right. Men and women are a completely different thing. This is true. Have you ever met a man or a woman? They're completely Okay, why, why is that? I, I don't understand. Why? Okay, let me ask you this. How, uh, okay, I won't ask you how old. I will ask you how old you are. Okay, because you're young enough that it's probably not insulting to ask you. So I'm 22, so I'm probably naive, right? No. Why aren't you 60? Why aren't you 60? <laughs> and why? Why can't you identify as 60? Why, what, what is the problem with you identifying as 60? <laughs> You're right. Age is significantly less important than gender. You can't magically change your gender. You can't magically change your sex. You can't magically change your age. You can still legally change it. People recognize You can't legally change your age, by the way. <laughs> Obviously. You can change your name, you can change your sex, you can change your identity. Just because you can do things legally doesn't mean that they are correct biologically. Do lots of things in the past that were incorrect biologically and correct legally. For a long period of time in the United States, sterilization of the mentally ill took place. That didn't make it okay. Skinner versus Oklahoma. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote the decision. Right. I 
it's not a matter of open-minded and accepting. I I want them to get treatment that they see fit, but that's not involving me. The, the idea behind the, the transgender movement as a civil rights movement is the idea that all of their problems would just go away if I would pretend that they were the sex to which they claim. Uh, to which they claim membership. That's nonsense. The transgender suicide rate is 40%. It is And according to, the, according to the Anderson School at UCLA, it makes no difference. They, there's a study that came out last year. It makes no difference, virtually no difference, statistically speaking, as to whether people recognize you as a transgender person or not. which suggests there's a very high comorbidity between transgenderism, whatever that mental state may be, and suicidality. That has nothing to do with how society treats you. No, I don't think that, I do not think that the discrepancy, I do not think the discrepancy, first of all, I'm against bullying of any sort. Okay, the idea that, that somebody would beat somebody up is terrible. Okay? As somebody who was viciously bullied in high school, I'm not a fan of bullying. But the idea that the, the normal suicide rate across the United States is 4%. The suicide rate in the transgender community is 40%. The idea that 36% more transgender people are committing suicide because people are mean to them is ridiculous. It's not true, and it's not backed by any science that anyone can cite. It is pure conjecture. In fact, it's not even true that bullying causes suicide, according to a lot of studies. The, 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 for example, in the black community, where the idea is supposedly that America is a racist society, blacks are bullied a lot, okay, in the black community, black community has significantly lower suicide rates than in the white community. In fact, in third world countries, the suicide rate is significantly lower than in first world countries. Suicide actually seems to be a privilege of the upper classes if you actually look at it from a financial perspective. So the idea that suicidality is directly a result of people like me saying, no, men are not women and women are not men, It, it's, it's, it's not true. It's also... So you think it doesn't impact their identity at all or their depression or how they feel about themselves? I think the idea that you're going to sacrifice the entire society's proper definition of sex because you think that there is a, a in, in legal terms, somebody with an eggshell skull, meaning that somebody who has a pre-existing condition that makes them more susceptible to criticism, that that is not a way to run a society. You can't sacrifice truth because some people are going to actually suffer because of the truth. Plus, there's no evidence whatsoever that the suicide rate would go down in the transgender community in any marked way if people just started pretending that men were women and women were men. We're trying that experiment now. We'll find out whether it works. So far, no evidence. Have you talked to a group of trans people at all instead of this group of like white people? I'm more than happy to talk to a group of any people who will have me, but usually they protest me. <laughs> okay, last question um, about your Planned Parenthood thing. Um, so why do you think it's not about controlling women's bodies and just about the separate life? Like after the baby is born, 
how come more people don't care about them? They don't care where they end up in foster care. They don't care about the mother being poor. Like, OK, I do care about the mother being poor. I do care about foster care. OK, well, why would you advocate for that, though? Because Planned what? Parenthood is supposed to prevent abortions. Because I, well, Planned Parenthood doesn't prevent abortions. They, they do, perform though. hundreds of thousands of abortions a year. They perform 300,000 abortions a year. The leading abortion bill in the United States. Evidence for that, though. That they perform 300,000 abortions a year from Planned Parenthood. That's my evidence. They don't dispute that. No one disputes that. I'm not anti-birth control. I know. Birth control is extraordinarily cheap. That provides affordable birth control, which would in turn. Okay, they're not the only people in America who provide affordable birth control. You can go get a pack of condoms down at the local CVS for 12 bucks. Yes, and it's true that most forms of birth control are also extraordinarily cheap on an annualized basis. Unless you have a severe problem, most birth control is very cheap and readily available. And I'm not against people going and getting that from Planned Parenthood. As you may have noticed, I'm mostly against abortion. If you want to go to Planned Parenthood and get a contraceptive, go for it. I don't care. I do care when you start killing babies. This is a problem for me. But what about in rape and incest? Situations. Okay, so this is a okay. So yeah, here's the question. Yes. I mean, this is a long conversation. I'm enjoying it actually, which is why I'm allowing you to stay. But it's but, uh, but it's but the, the question of, of rape and incest. First of all, important to note: rape and incest are not only a vast minority of, of abortion cases; they're an extraordinarily low percentage of abortion cases. So. So if we can first stipulate that all the other abortions are bad, then we can talk about that other one. Can we do that? Are all the other abortions bad, or are those ones OK? And you're just using this as an excuse to make the other ones OK? They're all OK. Ah, good, someone who's honest. So <laughs> who's the honest fellow? Who's, who's, OK, yay, honest people. Good, I like the honesty. OK, so all abortions are OK. So does the, so the, so, oh, a sign that I can't read because it has lots of words on it. OK, so I have one question for you and one question only on abortion. Does the vagina, the, the vaginal canal, magically confer personhood? Answer, does the vagina magically confer a personhood? Yeah, raised hands are OK. You, sir. No, the first breath does. The first breath confers personhood. OK, so if the baby is in the womb and is exactly the same size and has not yet breathed, and you take a knife and you stab the baby in the head, a fully formed nine-month-old baby, it is not a human. The only thing that makes it a human is when it takes a breath. It has to independently breathe. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to stick to it, yeah, because I'm also pro-capital punishment and pro-selective suicide. So I'm going to stick with it. Selective suicide? Yeah, I, assume you, I assume you mean elective suicide. I mean elective suicide. Elective, elective suicide. suicide. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to make someone commit suicide. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good, because that wouldn't be suicide. That would be homicide. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, that, that, by the way, I'm for capital punishment, too, because people who kill people should be killed. But babies who have not killed people should not. And this is my basic position on abortion. So let me just, so, but I'll get your answer because you're the one who asked the question. Are you willing to stipulate that all the other abortions are bad? Just rape and incest bother you. I mean, no, I believe a woman should have the right to move Got it. So that's an excuse, right? So it's an excuse so that we can say that, uh, so that we can, we can take the marginal case and then say that the marginal case applies to all cases. OK, that's, that's again, faulty thinking. But, if you want me to answer specifically on rape and incest, here is my basic answer. Rapists should be castrated or killed. You shouldn't kill babies. End of story. But are they ever castrated and killed? Most rapists don't even get convicted. I agree. And that's usually the left side of the aisle, because the left side wants to let them out after five years in prison. Uh, 
I want them castrated or killed. I'm telling you what my belief is. My belief is not public policy at the moment. But I think, would you agree with me on that one? Can we at least get a little agreement to finish this particular parlay? Okay. You, should rapists be castrated or killed? Well, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, we agree. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>